Thank you. Oh, Barry Smith, uh, Chair, UNC Board of Governors. Wendy Murphy, Chair, President of Team. Uh, Jim Holmes, Chair of uh, Public. David Powers, Chair of BM University Governance. Kevin Lewis, Chair of Randy Ramsey, Vice Chair of Board. Bill Alford, Board of Governors. Steve Ball, Department. On behalf of the Board and the University Leadership, I want to let you know that we value the input and opinions of the university community and general public, uh, especially citizens who are willing to come and gather here to discuss related matters relative to the university. We look forward to these public comment sessions as, as an opportunity to hear from you. We will be following up on the comments we hear with the help of the university staff. As a reminder, the success of our public comment sessions depends on the respectful engagement of everyone involved. Those attending as an official meeting may not engage in conduct that interferes with the rights of others to observe and listen to the proceedings. Any individual who disrupts the public comment session will be asked to leave and may be subject to arrest. Thank you all for attending. Good morning. My name is Dr. Nora Dennis, and I'm a physician and an assistant professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at that other university in Durham. I'm a Tar Heel born of two heart, Tar Heels, however, and I attended UNC as a Moorhead Scholar, class of 2001, and received my master's in public health from the Gillings School. I am here to say simply that Silent Sam's time here is finished. My grandfather, John Eric Wilson, was a professor emeritus of biochemistry here at UNC. When he moved from Cornell to UNC in 1951, he and my grandmother, Marion, were shocked at the way that older black people dropped their gaze and shuffled backward when approaching white people in the street. Silent Sam would have been proud that the fire of violence and genocide from which he was wrought still burned so fierce. After all, did not Julian Carr proudly tell the tale of horsewhipping a Negro wench because she publicly spoke ill of a white woman at the unveiling of Silent Sam? The statue celebrates black fear. When my father was called a nigger lover, as a little boy attending Carver Elementary, Silent Sam must have smiled upon that as well. He was placed to remind North Carolinians, white North Carolinians, of their supposedly shared heritage and opinion on the war to protect slavery. Never mind that North Carolina was far from eager to join the Confederacy, that draft dodging, desertion, and tax evasion were common, and that many in our state were ambivalent to or opposed to the war. In the world order proposed during the retelling of Southern history represented by Silent Sam, apparently this statue represents a shared white heritage. My mother and father, black and white, met and married as undergraduates in the 1960s on UNC's campus. The Silent Sam no doubt shuddered, and her grades were better than his too. Silent Sam was beginning not to belong. When I chose UNC over Harvard and Stanford, it was because I believed in Charles Kuralt's beautiful statement that it was a university of the people, and because I loved my state and my community. The continued presence of a prominent statue celebrating white supremacy on a campus that purports to be for all of us is an insult. Silent Sam belongs to the campus about as much as a statue of the soldier of the Third Reich. He may have been brave, he may have been a beloved relative, but his cause was not just, so we cannot celebrate his actions. And by the way, my children are directly descended from a Confederate soldier, and my brother-in-law is a great-great-grandson of, of uh, Stonewall Jackson. We don't celebrate their actions. In a pluralistic, multiracial, and intelligent place where truth matters and facts still exist, there is no home for Silent Sam. My family won't be donating further until Silent Sam is removed. Having read the NC General Statute, Chapter 100, I would say that Silent Sam needs to be moved for reconfiguration of the open space of, of the quad near Franklin Street, given the hubbub that has erupted in his presence. I call on the Board of Governors to petition the North Carolina Historical Commission to remove the statue. We deserve better. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mario Benavente, and I would like to begin by thanking those students and faculty members of UNC and community members uh, outside right now and inside today for the persistent efforts to see the removal of Silent Sam from a corporal place. Despite what Chairman Harry Smith would have you believe, there are more than six of us. 
and we'll be unrelenting in our efforts to see this 105 year mistake North Island Sam made right. This is my second time speaking at the Board of Governors public comment event, previously in January as a senior university student and now as an alumnus. Having reviewed the board's responses to public comments, I've noticed that none of them addressed the concerns that were uh, brought up previously regarding Silent Sam. So um, with that in mind, I'd like to speak more directly um, to the board this time and ask for a very specific response. Governors, issue a statement in support of the removal of Silent Sam from McCorkle Place uh, to the North Carolina General Assembly and the North Carolina Historical Commission. If you require guidance on how to approach the requested statement of condemnation for the white supremacist monument known as Silent Sam, please review the statements issued by 15 UNC departments and schools calling for the removal since last August. They include the Department of uh, English, Art and, uh, Department of Art and Art History, Communication, Sociology, History, American Studies, Geography, Romance Studies, African and Diaspora Studies, Department of the Classics, the School of Law, School of Public Health, the School of Education, the School of Social Work, and the School of Information and Library Sciences. You'll notice in their statements that they, are they all uniquely showcase how their academic disciplines recognize that Silent Sam is more than just a block of stone, as your colleague David Powers would have you believe. They collectively rebuke, uh, the collective rebuke by so many academics should dispel Powers' myth that it's just a bunch of spoiled kids taking a stand against this blight on our campus. If this board will not move to issue a statement, please respond with exactly why that is. This board cannot be trusted to lead and shape policy if it cannot respond convincingly to why it prefers to shrug off responsibility to the valid concerns of its students, faculty, and community. 15 members of this board of governors reportedly condemned President Spellings and Chancellor Folt for reaching out to Governor Cooper for guidance regarding the increasing public safety concerns around Silent Sam. Keep in mind, the murder of Heather Heyer in Charlottesville, Virginia, by radical white supremacists had just been perpetrated. A scenario whose potential still exists as long as Silent Sam remains prominently displayed at the entrance of our university. And do not mistake this reality as hyperbole. Please also review and respond to the collection of death threats issued against UNC graduate student Maya Little, which can be found at silentsam.com slash threats of violence. A small sample of the threats will follow. She should be shot on sight, Jerry Hines. Officers should have split her head open, Mo Monty. Let's put a noose on her neck until it snaps. Stephen Triplett, hang her. Eve Davenport Holder. Hang her and her communist comrades, Steve Quick. I would have walked up there and shot them, Barry Robinson. Those are the names, and there are many more examples that I, are too heinous to repeat aloud for their extensive use of racial slurs. Those are the same folks who want this board to remain silent on this issue. Stand with the people who have signed on to petitions to remove Silent Sam and to have the uh, charges dropped against anti-racist activist Maya Little. Um, we expect a response. Um, very soon, hopefully. Thank you. I am Mary Phillips, a, P a 1983 PhD graduate from UNC Chapel Hill School of Business in accounting, and I'm a resident of Chapel Hill. I speak on behalf of the members of the Chapel Hill Carver Area Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Delta Sigma Theta is a 105-year-old public service sorority whose first public act was to participate in the Women's Suffrage March in Washington, D.C. in 1913, the only African-American women's group in the march. I'm here to express our concerns about the UNC Confederate Mon Monument on the campus at Chapel Hill. To its credit, the university erected a monument on campus recognizing African American contributions to the building of the university. However, the UNC Confederate Mon Monument is a symbol of slavery and racism erected under the auspices of the North Carolina Division of the United Daughters of the Confederacy and aided by alumni of the university. As such, we call for the removal of UNC's Confederate Mon Monument from the campus. African Americans were brought to this country against their will were enslaved, lived through Jim Crow, and continue to live with racial discrimination, which results in disparities in everything from education to health to economics and equal justice. 
while the public discussion on the monument centers on paying tribute to the students who served and concerns about the rights of those whose ancestors supported the Confederacy, there seems not to be similar concerns for those who still suffer from the remaining vestiges of slavery and racial discrimination. As descendants of enslaved African Americans, some of whom are direct descendants of slaves from Orange County, and as alumni of UNC Chapel Hill, we want this reminder of slaver and Jim Crow to be removed from the university that calls itself the University of the People. We ask you to move quickly to rid the campus of this racist reminder, which was and still is another attempt to keep African Americans in their place. By taking this action, the university will be closer to being the place it aspires to be. Thank you and good morning. Good morning. I would like to congratulate the new leadership of the board and uh, welcome you to this uh, opportunity to make a difference in our community. Uh, my name is Anna Richards. I've been a resident of Chapel Hill for five years. I'm a retired uh, senior executive of a major corporation here. I worked 42 years. I could have lived anywhere in America. I moved here from the West Coast. I chose Chapel Hill because I, as many retirees, was looking for a small university town which had the uh, amenities and the social and educational opportunities that I sought, my husband and I sought for ourselves and our family. Um, we came here because we thought we were coming to a bastion of open and uh, thought and progressive, at least uh, open to alternative ways of thinking and a way that we could enjoy our retirement years. After five years here, um, I am uh, involved very much in the community. I'm also here, I'm president of the Chapel Hill Carborough NAACP and have taken on that role during my retirement, which is uh, an unpaid job, um, because of the many um, discrepancies and racist uh, activities that continue in this community and across our country. And one of which, um, unfortunately, uh, is this statue that looms over Franklin Street, and looms over this, what I thought was enlightened community that I chose to live in. The NAACP's mission is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights of all persons and to eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. As such, and on this near one year anniversary of Charlottesville, which happens on August 11th, I implore you to think about what, are, what message are we sending? What message do we want to send? What are we standing up for? What are we representing in this community? You have the option. You have the leadership. You, cannot, you can decide that you will no longer be constrained by whoever is constraining you. I won't go there. But I do say that as leaders in this community, as leaders of this university system, we should be striving to be that shining light, that example that welcomes all, that educates all, that moves forward in a progressive way toward a new reality that supports and, and, and upholds the values that I think we all want in our community and in our institutions. I implore you to remove Silent Sam, to consider, to take ownership, to lead. I'm here today because a new semester will begin soon, yet the Confederate monument known as Silent Sam still stands on the most prominent place on the UNC campus, a statue that is an offensive affront to many of UNC's faculty, students, and staff, a symbol that represents and reinforces white supremacy, a statue that should never have been given space on the UNC campus in the first place and should have been removed long ago, and to call on you, the Board of Governors, to take the necessary actions to remove the statue. I heard that it was recently stated by a member of the Board of Governors that only a handful of students were continuing to protest Silent Sam. Nothing could be further from the truth. I am a Chapel Hill native, the daughter of a UNC professor, the mother of a Carolina grad, and I'm a UNC alum, MPA 90. I retired as assistant director of the campus Y in 2016 and I'm a member of the Golden Fleece. 
I'm also a member of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. We have been sitting in at Silent Sam in solidarity with the student protests every Wednesday from 12 to 2 p.m. since last November, taking a break in July while students are gone and plan to resume when they return. We have been there weekly with our signs and handing out leaflets to talk with members of the campus community, interested visitors, and also supporters of white supremacy who have come to taunt and abuse us. Why? This statue may be silent, but its presence speaks loudly. In fact, it shouts. It is indisputable that Silent Sam was erected in 1913 as part of the white power movement of the Jim Crow era. The daughters of the Confederacy who paid for the statue were overt supporters of white supremacy, and Julian Carr's violently racist remarks of the dedication are well known. Silent Sam's presence is not only a narrative about this past, but reflects and reinforces the ideology of white supremacy today. UNC students have protested Silent Sam for decades. The struggle to remove the statue heightened in 2015 when Green Newsom removed the Confederate flag from the South Carolina State Capitol, and again last summer when white nationalists and Nazis marched in Charlottesville and Heather Heyer was murdered. And the response to these nonviolent student protests at Carolina has been cameras, police surveillance, at least one undercover cop, barricades, and most recently the arrest of UNC history graduate student Maya Little, which who poured her own blood and red ink on Silent Sam symbolic of the lives and blood of the African Americans who suffered under slavery, Jim Crow, racist terror lynching, and continue to suffer racial discrimination today. Federal law prohibits any university from creating a racially hostile environment. For this reason alone, the Board of Governors should act to remove a statute that stands in opposition to the inclusive and welcoming environment that UNC's own policy on discrimination purports to uphold. As we all know, federal law trumps state law, including the North Carolina law that gives only the North Carolina Historical Commission the power to remove monuments of remembrance. However, the Board of Governors has failed to even petition the Historical Commission to remove Silent Sam for reasons of public safety. As we approach the one-year anniversary of the murder of Heather Heyer, the August 20th court date for Maya Little, and the beginning of a new school year, I call on the Board of Governors to work for the removal of the statue, to drop charges against Ms. Little, and to stand for the best values of this university and our state. Thank you. Before I begin, I want to start with a quote from Chancellor Folk regarding UNC's commitment to diversity. We must create a diversity structure that is coordinated and integrated that celebrates all forms of diversity, which ensures equitable and inclusive educational and social benefits for all. My name is Nico and I'm a rising senior at UNC studying business at Keenan Flagler. I come from three generations of UNC alumni and I used to love this school before I came here. I can sit here and repeat all the points you've already heard about Silent Sam, but at this point it's hardly worth it. You are well aware of what the statue represents and have made a conscious decision to choose money in your pockets over the security of students of color. Chances are you won't even remember my name when you go home today, but hopefully you remember my story. So here it goes. A couple months ago I was out on Franklin Street getting food with one of my good friends when we came up on another one of my friends in an argument with two other students. My other friend was black, the two students were white. So we go up and calm the situation down and break everyone apart and we're beginning to walk away. And I hear one of the two white students yell, niggers, at me and my friends. I was paralyzed, shock, anger, rage. I mean, imagine being called that by someone who's supposed to be your fellow Tar Heel. To be honest, I still get upset talking about it today. And every time I walk past that spot on Franklin Street, I get angry. And then I walk another half mile and see Silent Sam, proudly representing the Confederacy who started an entire war based on keeping people like me enslaved. So I sit here and look at a mostly white Board of Governors that paid $390,000 to protect the Confederate statue. And to be honest, I'm disgusted. UNC sits on its high horse and pretends to care about its minority students. Statements like the one from Chancellor Folt are nothing but bold-faced lies to the community, trying to protect the false identity of acceptance that UNC tries to portray. Black people are underrepresented in every level of university association, student, faculty, and definitely administration. I can't tell you how many times I've been the only black student in my business school classes. I can't tell you how many times white students look differently at me and my friends. Your decisions have enabled people who, like the guy who called me and my friends the N-word on Franklin Street. And to be honest, us students are tired of it. We're tired of the lies. You can say all the right things and take as many selfies as you want, 
But that doesn't change the fact that you're paying to protect the symbol of oppression to an already marginalized population of students, faculty, and staff. At this point, I'm convinced that you're not only inconsiderate to the security of minority students, but also blatantly racist. And until your actions back up your press statements, I won't believe any different. Thank you for your time.